Wait, what be going on? Can you see me? I can't be seeing you, it's so dark. This reminds me of how it feels to be separated from God. We be in need in his light. Ah, there you be. Now let's see what be in our treasure chest today. Ah, now this be making sense. This be a lighthouse. Do you know, when you're out in a boat in the dark in the ocean, on the land there be a lighthouse. It shows a light and guides the boat where to go. That be like knowing God. He wants us to follow him, and he will guide us through life. Today is my favorite day to be shared with you. Now, if you be remembering, I told you that inside me heart, I asked Jesus into me life. I remember the day that everything changed. You see, I'm a dedicated follower of Christ. And the last, I am excited to share God's truth with you. Now first... Let's be talking about a testimony. Do you be knowing what that is? I think back on the first time I shared my testimony. Let's look back together. I remember one very special day. The mom was telling us a story about how much God loves us. She said knowing God was as easy as A, B, C, and seeing as how I loved the C, I knew I was in. And blow me down, that very day me and the little buccaneers did it. We prayed and talked to Jesus. We told Jesus that we needed him to take the helm and that we would be his crew. Now looking back, I can see that God knew the motives of my heart. As I said before, I started in humble beginnings. <laughs> I can see it now. I was just a pile of fabric and a bunch of unspooled thread. We puppets all would walk a different path, and our future was unknown. Now even though I didn't understand what a relationship with God was, I prayed right there in my unspooled pile that God would use me life for good. The truth is, I didn't know I was scheduled to be sewn into a family of pirates who pillaged and plundered and didn't give a hoot. I was going to be a pirate named Blimey. This is a picture of who I was supposed to be. <sighs> It was a rough family with a long line of sin choices and no repenting. Yes, it's sad but true. Ah, but the Lord had a different plan from the beginning. I was stitched together in a factory by the same seamstress that sewed many of the Bible greats. Joseph, you know, the one with the colorful coat. Daniel, he who spent a night in the lion's den. John the Baptist, the cousin of Jesus. Oh, and he even baptized Jesus. After I was sewn together, we would often hang out and anticipate who would adopt us. Yes, that is I, just waiting to be chosen. Now my bounty was paid for at a Christian bookstore. And now look, I get to tell my story to each of you. Ah, so often we think we know what our future holds. But the truth be that there is only one true God who we know in the future. And he wants you to live your life with him in your heart. Romans 5 8 be saying, But God shows his love for us, because while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. My dear friend, Mima Mel, be telling you a true story. Hello, mateys. How are you, my friends? I am so glad that you're here today. It's me, Mima Mel. Now, today's the most important day of our time together. Now, we've talked about Abram, who became Abraham and discovered God's great plan for him. And then, of course, we talked about the Good Samaritan and how he responded to the traveler. And, oh boy, did we rock out, <laughs> did we rock out to Pirate Pete's music? And we learned about Paul and how even he was in jail, he enjoyed writing letters of encouragement to others. Now, Pirate Pete is right. Asking God to be in your life is the biggest and best decision that you will ever make. God loves us so much. None of us are perfect. We all make mistakes and all need Jesus in our lives. The love of Jesus is unconditional. 
His love reminds me of a story of a man and his two sons in the Bible. Let's read it together from Luke chapter 15, chapters 11, verses 11 through 32. Now, before we start, let me tell you a little something about the man in this story. He was a kind man and he had money and many workers who he treated very well. His sons did not have to worry if they would eat or that they always had what they needed. Well, Jesus is telling this story. Let's start on verse 11. There was a man who had two sons. The younger, spoke, the younger son spoke to his father and he said, Father, give me my share of the family property. So the father divided his property between his two sons. Not long after that, the younger son packed up all he had, and then he left for a country far away. There he wasted his money on wild living. He spent everything he had, and then the whole country ran low on food. So the son didn't have what he needed. He went to work for someone who lived in that country, and that person sent the son to the fields to feed the pigs. The son wanted to fill his stomach with the food the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Then he began to think clearly again, and he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough food? But here I am dying from hunger. I will get up and go back to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and I have sinned against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So we got up and went to his father. While the son was still a long way off, his father saw him. He was filled with tender love for his son. He ran to him. He threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Let's have a feast and celebrate. This son of mine was lost, and now he is alive again. He was lost, and now he is found. So they began to celebrate. Oh my goodness, this is how our relationship with God is. No matter what mistakes we make, how much we struggle, or how great our day is having Jesus with us at all times is possible. All we have to do is ask. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. That story be so good. You see, Jesus loves each of you just like that father loved and accepted both of his sons. Jesus was born so that you can live. Now, I will tell you the good news was the birth of Jesus, and that he lived on earth as a perfect man for 33 years. Then, he died on a cross, and rose again on the third day. Believe in this truth, and talking to God is how, when our time on earth is done, we be able to go to heaven forever. We are all human. And we all sin. That be meaning we make mistakes and sometimes intentionally do wrong things. When we ask God to be part of our lives, we be forgiven and have a new life. Asking Jesus into your life to be a dedicated follower of Christ is as easy as A, B, C. A. Admit that I be a sinner. B. 
believe that Jesus was born and gave his life for me. And C. Commit my life to him. Today we learn that kids can accept that Jesus loves them and that they need him.